Hey guys! So, Spooky Comic Roundup Part 2. These spooky graphic novels are actually less spooky and more lovey. Um, because it's going to be a monster love story theme or monster romance. So, let's jump right in. Uh, hang around for some actual spooky comics at the end. I do have some bonus ones. The Carpet Merchant of Constania. Uh, this is volume one, and it's by Remina Lee. If I pronounce people's names wrong, I'm very sorry. Please let me know. Uh, this book you can actually read online for free because it was a webcomic. This is just the physical version of it. Um, it's also mild on spooks. It takes a while for the monster stuff to kind of come into play. It's introduced at the beginning, but then there's mostly just like people living their lives, man. Um, it's story set in the 1600s uh, Istanbul, aka Constantinople. The art is beautiful. And uh, the love story seems very real and relatable. It's good for kids, but maybe a little long. Let's make sure we're focused there. Maybe a little long for them. You know, it's kind of big. <laughs> um, possibly uh, troubling parts, topics include miscarriage, death of family members, and a few slightly violent scenes with blood. All right, check that one out. Then we've got Can I Pet Your Werewolf? This is a comic anthology, so it's got lots of different artists in it. Uh, not all of them involve romance, but I kind of snuck it in here because some of them do. We've got werewolf boyfriends, werewolf friends, gay werewolf couples, lesbian werewolves, a werewolf that's just um, a hand. <laughs> uh, no cursing, some's implied, but no real cursing, uh, or extreme violence, none of that. Now there is some nudity and shows characters smoking. Um, there's a character flicking each other off, so rude gestures. Uh, and drinking, and there are um, references to sex. So, if that's not something you can deal with, you can pass this one up, but it is very cute and has a lot of different artists and art styles. Okay. Next, these are Monster Kind, book one and two. I'll just go ahead and put two down since it's just a continuation. Um, they're by Taylor C. They're another example of a story that is a webcomic, so you can go and read this online if you're not sure if you want to buy. Um, so uh, it's about a human that moves into a monster apartment for his job as a social worker, and all the monsters in the area are kind of on edge. Uh, you can tell there's some social unrest happening with, between monsters and humans, but it isn't completely developed right away so you don't really know what's going on you got to start to piece it together from the interactions um there's protests uh hits there's hints of lost love and there's uh shows a realistic world with complex problems uh this charming cute and in-depth characters and some mild cursing and intense situations there's blood uh, loss of loved ones and drinking that's LGBTQ plus inclusive and positive. All right, monster kinds. All right, now, oh, this one's Life of Melody by Mary Costa. Life of Melody is one of my favorites. So, two fantasy creatures find this baby in the woods and neither of them trust each other, so they have to end up raising the baby. So it's very much an enemies to lovers um, gay love story, uh, and I can't recommend it enough. I really, really love the art, the humor. Uh, try, try to get a hold of this one if you can. Um, it, it's one of my favorites. Um, uh, it's so cute, endearing, lovely, a tiny bit of fighting and blood, intense moments, but otherwise good for all ages, I would say. Okay, one of my favorites. Oh, it's hard to see. Okay, um, all right, then we've got Moonstruck by Grace Ellis and Shay Beagle. Um, this one is a lesbian love story with, you guessed it, monsters. 
a cute modern story of dating but with magic thrown in. Uh, I love all the characters, especially Jed the Centaur. Uh, there's also like these cute other comic panels like thrown in there of what the character is supposed to enjoy reading. Let's see if I can find one. Uh, and there's little bios thrown in here too. Yeah, if you like this one, different art style. Um, this is volume one, so not everything is resolved, but it's still a satisfactory ending. Only some fantasy violence, no cursing or blood really. Um, yeah, so that's another cute one. All right, speed bound, bonus round, not love stories. <laughs> Let's go. This one is R.L. Stein, Just Beyond, uh, by Kelly and Nicole Matthews. Uh, this is a just spooky enough for kids sort of story, you know, very R.L. Stein, fun characters, uh, standard kids horror genre. I love the art. I think it's really, really good. And, uh... Good one. Yeah, Rickety Stitch, story of a skeleton troubadour who is trying to find out about his past. Um, it's by Ben Costa and James Parks. It's comedy. It's actually really quite funny. The humor is very good in it. Um, some of the jokes a little more adult, but not uh, no bad words or anything like that. Just things yeah, I think adults will find funnier. <laughs> uh huh. Then my last one, if you're looking for real spook, is Bones of the Coast. This is a anthology um, by Cloudscape Comics, and it is legitimately scary. These stories are frightening, they are um, upsetting, unsettling, spooky, spooky things that you can look forward to reading this one. So if you're into that, I would really look into it. It's actually very, very well done. Um, now, I have one more comic in my brain that I do not have here. Maybe I'll put a picture up. Ooh, the comic is called Through the Woods. Um, it's by Emily Carroll, and I got it from the library, and that's why I don't own it. So support your local libraries and go get any comics that you can find there, uh, or any other books you like to read. The art in it is really awesome, uh, and it is actually really scary, too. So look into all these, and wah! Thanks for watching. Bye.